If I were to ask a slightly related question uh, which falls under the purview of Western imperialism. So uh, why do you think that India gets such a negative coverage by the Western press? And is this true for other post-colonial countries as well? Uh, it's true of most uh, post-colonial countries, uh, unless they are incredibly pliant and willing to be managed. Uh, so, for example, you don't see as negative uh, portrayals of Pakistan or Saudi mm -hmm. Arabia or the Emirates uh, because they're seen as essential allies. You know, they share intelligence, they help counter extremism, you know, whatever that means. And uh, uh, there's, uh, there's instructions, you know, don't go too hard on them. They're more useful alive than dead. You know, that, oh, uh, okay. he, he might be a brutal dictator, but he's our brutal dictator. That's what they say <laughs> in Washington. Uh, same in Latin America, you know, they don't want to talk about Latin American dictators because they're, you know, generally trained and installed by the CIA. Uh, oh. With India, it's a unique case. Uh, so yes, you know, we face a lot of the negative courage that many other uh, uh, post-colonial countries face. For example, Kenya does not get positive coverage or South Africa does not receive positive coverage. But in the case of India, this negative co uh, coverage is more or less eternal that you know well at least in modern times uh, you can trace a straight line for 200 years the way india has been portrayed has there's no difference between 1820 or 1821 and 2021 mm -hmm. uh, and why is that it's because india is this wonderful blank canvas in which you can paint you know your fears and hopes and aspirations for domestic politics uh, and use it to massage minds in the UK or in the US or in France. So examples of that are, uh, so a friend of mine, Vishal Ganeshan, you know, he was mm -hmm. recently on this program as well. He runs an account called uh, Hindu History. So Hindu mm -hmm. with two O's, the archaic spelling. And he looks into the media archives in the US to see mm -hmm. how India and Hindus were portrayed uh, in the 1800s. And what was fascinating was that generally portrayals of India were written by either people who had never set foot in India or by missionaries who went to civilize the heathens. So they had a certain interest uh, in portraying India a certain way. So the ones who had never been to India, they wrote about India in order to mobilize uh, public opinion for domestic political debates. So for example, uh, the U.S. was founded by Protestants on Protestant principles. They saw their form of republic to be unique and a unique product of Protestant genius. They would say Catholics, you know, Orthodox Christians, they don't have republics because they're semi-savage. They're semi-pagan. That's why they need a strong king to rule over them. Uh, that's why, you know, Italians, Spanish, you know, uh, Greeks, uh, uh, Russians, they're, you know, they're not really, you know, white, you know, they're not really civilized. Their, their values are incompatible with, uh, you know, the Republican ideal because that's, you know, that comes from Protestantism. And uh, as a result, uh, before, you know, they had uh, you know, modern immigration, they had uh, immigrants from countries like Spain or Italy or Ireland or, uh, or Poland. They were seen as non-white because they were Catholic. And okay. you know, this community wanted the right to set up their own schools, so Catholic-run schools, so that they could, uh, you know, be administered by priests and nuns. Uh, you know, we're familiar with Catholic schools and convent schools in India as well. Mm -hmm. They wanted the right to do that in the U.S. And there was a big debate about that. So uh, it was a lot of public opinion about. Uh, and it was reflected in the media and caressed and massaged in the media that, oh, this is terrible. This is the beginning of the end because all Catholics have a double loyalty to the Vatican and the Vatican is going to control the minds of children and they're going to be subversive. And they, because Catholics are semi-pagans, they're no, not really different to all these savage Indians. And they would give mm -hmm. examples like, oh, you know, uh, the Jagannath Puri Yatra 
uh, they would say, oh, the great chariot of Juggernaut, it crushes babies and crushes all these savages and they scream mm. as the wheels crush them. And, uh, you know, it's so, you know, barbaric. And this will happen in the US if we let Catholics run their own schools. There was even a oh. cartoon uh, that was published, uh, so an, an illustration, which uh, was called The American Ganges. So there was a mm -hmm. river which was uh, portrayed to be like our Ganga. And there were uh, crocodiles coming out of it that represented Catholics. And uh, there were children on the, uh, on the side of the bank, uh, on the river bank. They were being protected by a brave Protestant uh, teacher. Uh -huh. And in the back, on the other side of the, the American Ganges was the Vatican and uh, the buildings of Rome and the Vatican City. So they would use these narratives for domestic debates because India is a wonderful blank canvas. You can find you know, any reason, uh, any argument, anything you want over there without any cost. You know, there's no one in India who's going to criticize them. There were no Indians in mm -hmm. India, uh, in the US at the time. Mm -hmm. And then the other uh, portrayals come from missionaries whose job it was to go to, uh, to India to civilize the savages. Now that mm -hmm. starts off with an assumption that everyone is uncivilized and everyone is savage. So then you have to uh, create that myth. So you have to first write about how uncivilized they are, how savage they are, and how their culture and their religion is wrong. Then you can mobilize money from back home, you can mobilize public sympathy and continue with your cause. That has not changed in 200 years. Maybe the debates are different, maybe the form of civilization they're trying to bring or what they're trying to cure us of has changed a little bit, but it's the same motivations they have. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanyavad. Namaskar.